Hello, my name is Sarah Radford and welcome to 3D Design. So what is 3D Design? At Havant, A-Level 3D Design is an art and design subject. That means there's a focus on practical making, always underpinned by drawing. 3D Design asks students to consider function and use alongside the aesthetic qualities of their creative design ideas. It covers a particularly wide range of activities which can vary in scale from jewellery to architecture. Students could also choose to work in the areas of, uh, of functional ceramics, interior and exhibition design, theatre set and prop design. They might choose to work with aspects of craft such as puppet design or the construction of single items of furniture. It really is a broad subject. Basically, if you enjoy making, this course is for you. So what do our lessons look like? Lessons take place in our 3D design studio. We have our own dedicated space. You'll undertake a wide variety of creative workshops using both resistant and non-resistant materials. You're going to gain experience with many techniques and processes, which you'll then develop for your own projects. But we don't always stay in our studio. Primary research is important in any creative subject. We make trips to galleries and exhibitions as frequently as we can. We have good links with universities and we're inviting guest speakers from, from industry. 3D design students also have the opportunity to join department residential trips. For example, last year, students went um, on a five day trip to New York. How will you be assessed? As with all art and design A-levels, 3D design is coursework based. That means assessment is ongoing throughout the course with regular feedback tutorials and discussions. Marks will be indicative of the level that you're working at and will allow you to continually develop and refine your work. Final assessment takes place at the end of the course. Year one is workshop based. You'll develop your skills in making. You'll be set assignments which will encourage you to combine your skills. Your work will be recorded in a sketchbook, which will include critical studies, contextual research, planning, practical work and evaluations. Year one forms the foundation for what happens in year two. So year two consists of two main components. Component one is the personal investigation and it's worth 60% of your overall grade. This component consists of a major in-depth, contextual and practical based project. Your practical work is supported by a minimum of a thousand words, which can be presented in a variety of ways. That's followed by component two, which is worth 40% of your overall grade. It requires you to, to produce preparatory work in response to an externally, externally set question. You'll research, experiment and develop ideas and plan for a self-directed outcome, which you'll need to create during a controlled test time. More details about this are in our prospectus, which is available through the website. The entry requirements, as with all A-levels at Havant, are the standard five GCSEs at grade four, which must include English language and maths. For 3D design, you should also have studied an art or design based GCSE and achieved a minimum of grade four in that subject. In some circumstances, it may be possible to gain entry to the qualification without an art related GCSE by submitting a portfolio showcasing your practical work at interview. What can it lead to? 
Well, whatever your chosen progression route, whether it's university, apprenticeship or employment, an A-level in 3D design will help you get there. The UK creative industries are a growth area. British designers have a worldwide reputation for their innovation and imagination. But even more than that, the key skills of creative thinking and problem solving are highly transferable and sought by employers in many different fields. There's a long list of opportunities and possible career paths, um, only some of which are listed here. What other subjects fit with 3D design? The answer is pretty much anything. Students, for example, who are interested in pursuing architecture or civil engineering might choose to take maths or physics alongside. For others, the best fit will be another of the creative arts subjects, such as textiles, graphics, fine art or photography, with one other non-creative arts subject. But other com common combinations include business, earth sciences, philosophy, humanities and languages. 3D design is as diverse as the students who choose to study it. If you'd like to see more of what our students have been up to, follow us on Instagram at HSDC 3D Design. That's it from me. Thank you for visiting. Here are some words from our second year students. Don't just take my word for it. Have a good read about what they say about the subject and how they feel about it. Thanks again for visiting and I look forward to meeting some of you in person soon. Hi, welcome to Fine Art uh, A-Level at Haven Campus HSDC. I'm going to take you through a few slides and talk about what we do. Hope you enjoy. So welcome to the studio. This is um, a workshop lesson going on um, some observational studies of still life. All students up on easels to capacity. We normally have an average of around 18 to 20 students in the studio. So here's the studio. It's all fully equipped and ready to go for all sorts of different workshops from printmaking to painting to sculpture to illustration. Um, with support from technicians available every lesson. Something quite unique is that our studios are always open to students who want to do a little bit more and really push for the grades and to get extra feedback. So if you want to come in before lessons, um, after lessons, it's not a problem at all. We can find a space for on the Fine Art A-Level, students are given the creative freedom to explore the themes and the, to do with the projects that they want to, but also um, the materials that they wish to work with, um, whether it be oil painting, um, digital work, uh, photography, mixed media. We sort of cater for all of those things. On the next few slides, this is a few examples of what our students um, produce from lots of different approaches and styles. So for a number of years now, we've been running with the exam board OCR and they've been really um, supportive and and they've been quite happy with our moderation process and the marks that we submit. So we will continue with them. During year one, we normally split it up into lots of practical workshops at the beginning to build on your skills that you've learned from GCSE. And then normally a mini project leading up till Christmas and then a mock exam paper to get you used to what it's going to be like in the year two when you get the exam paper for real. Um, year two, you will move on to personal investigation, which is totally a subject of your choice. 
obviously with some guidance from us and that will accompany with a, be accompanied with a related study to do like a visual essay to support your personal investigation. So it would run like a normal project where you would do a lot of research, experimentation, um, observational work, and then produce your final outcome, um, not under exam conditions. So then you move on to an exam paper in February and work in like a normally into your sketchbooks and planning out what you're going to do for the 15 hour exam for a final outcome. So here we have a number of approaches to the personal investigation project in year two. And for example, on the left, we have a portrait, a self portrait of a student um, digitally. So that student produced a number of different self portraits based around himself. Uh, at the top we have a cat and this was based around observations around the house um, what the cat was doing and all sorts of things like that uh, at the bottom a uh, student decided to look into basing her project around a trip to a german concentration camp and then basing work around that looking into artists who have also explored that also on the right we have a uh, nice painting of uh, a student's family who and she's used lots of different artists to kind of influence the work throughout the two years on the course you will be supported with one-to-one -one guidance from every lecturer that sees you um, whether that be for, for support with ideas with research target setting to get you the highest grade possible um, but also sort of ideas generation and how to move forward. For a number of years now, we've had 100% pass rate, and um, on average, the last couple of years, we've had 75% high grades. So this means A stars or B grades. So there are lots of opportunities on the course to go on trips and residentials. Um, we can't stress enough how important it is to see artwork in the flesh um, firsthand. So, but also to sort of research into artists and see some new things really to inspire you to push your projects along. So here's a few snaps of our trips. And here we are in the V&A Museum a couple of years ago. Um, we normally go up to London two or three times a year to see shows either at the Tate Galleries or the National Gallery, the Portrait Gallery. The last two years we've been to New York on an art residential uh, to see the sites and art galleries there. Here we are behind the um, Guggenheim Museum. We also go to the Whitney Museum, see the skyline. It's just an amazing experience. So we were lucky enough to have Joe Monroe, an ex-student, come in and talk about his work as a visiting artist. Uh, he has won awards um, in London for his illustrations and been, gi been given bursaries to travel around the world and document what he sees. So he came in and talked to the students and students found it a really valuable experience. So both the lecturers on the Fine Art A-Level course are practicing artists, um, professionals, um, selling their work in the industry and passing off as much information as we can to help you guys if that's the way you want to go. It's a quite a unique opportunity for the students. Um, they can show their artwork at Chichester University. We've been working with them for a couple of years now and putting on a show to accompany the degree show at the end of the year. So it's quite exciting for the students to get involved with. Thank mm -hmm. you.
next year is there's a new a level being set up so to accompany creative students um, if they wish to study two creative courses you can do this one as a more sort of an academic subject alongside uh, although there is some sort of practical study involved as well so if you want to you can choose to look at lots of different areas within sort of fine art sculpture design craft art theory the human form landscape still life architecture and buildings um, and so on and so forth so um, you'd be you have to sort of do more written work and more analysis of artworks um, visual research and um, it kind of runs parallel to our fine art course as well So the entry requirements to get on the fine art course, um, you would need five GCSEs at grade four or above, including English and maths. You require to present a portfolio of work at the interview, demonstrate your ability in the subject. Um, students accepted onto an art-based courses would normally have to have a full GCSE in art and design at grade four or above, but it may be possible to start without a GCSE uh, in art by the submission of a portfolio interview so if we believe that you know you've got the passion and the desire to do the course um, and we can see that you've got some skills and starting points to work with then we'll happily take you on so that's uh, that's all really um, if you'd like to see more of our students work there's an online exhibition because of covid we couldn't hold our normal interview show so it's all online and we also have an Instagram page if you want to see what we do day to day, uh, students' artwork and trips, etc. Uh, also, if you've got any other questions, please don't um, hesitate to email me. The Graphics A Level at Haven and South Downs College provides the opportunities for students to develop their creative potential as a graphic designer or graphic illustrator for a wide area of study. Be it advertising, campaigns, or branding, graphic communication is integral to everyday life. Focusing on the use of text and imagery to communicate ideas, you'll produce practical explorations alongside critical analysis in areas including illustration, typography, advertising, packaging design, and design for print. graphics because I really liked art. I did art with GCSEs but I didn't really like how the teachers have a lot of control of what you do, what topics you do and they really like led you by the hand and with graphics they give you a very like independent approach. I chose graphics because I like the combination of practical art and digital design and the fact that you don't have to be specifically good at drawing or art or painting to be able to take graphics. Uh, so what type of skills do you learn? For the digital side you learn Illustrator, Photoshop and other Adobe skills. You also learn the basics of photography and you can take the practical 
digital art that we use and turn it into digital. I prefer the more traditional way, which is the practical by hand. And we do collages, we put different materials together, we do printmaking, we do etching, and you just learn so much more about the industry. Hi there, I'm Ruth Lacey and I'm course manager for A-Level Textiles. This is an exciting course. It's perfect for those that are wishing to explore their creativity and it's, it's inspiring, it's broad, it's a dynamic subject. So we'd like you to discover your potential. You'd be working with diverse materials, upcycling, maybe using traditional, non-traditional textile techniques. So we'd like to explore your own creativity and individual style. You may be working with textiles, you may be working with craft, you may be working in interiors. So you'll be learning in this studio environment, which is a fantastic space. It's two really big studios. It's a practical course, so you'll be doing lots of workshops at the tables. We want you to be inquisitive, experimental, confident and aspirational. Course structure. Looking at year one, it's very workshop based. So you'll be encouraged to work with increasing confidence and freedom and independence that will take you through to year two. Project themes will enable you to explore historical, contemporary, cultural referencing. Year two, this is where your main marks will come. Component one is 60%. It's the personal investigation, which is a major study of your choice. It's a practical element of the course. There will be a written element too. You'll be producing a body of work which informed by your historical critical analysis, your development work and you'll be um, creating your final piece in either discipline of fashion or textiles. Okay. Your second element of your year two is is 40% of your mark. It is through the exam board. It will be an externally set assignment. Again, it will be a mostly practical element of your course. The last 15 hours where you're making your outcome will be in exam conditions. And how will you be assessed regularly? I'll be coming round, chatting to you. We do map your work against the assessment objectives. So we'll give you targets and we'll give you feedback regularly. Um, there will be group work, some peer observations, you will be looking at other, other students' work, discussing, collaborating. The component submissions come in, in timely moments through the year. Your final assessments will be through um, teacher-led and moderated by the exam board. Trips and museums, we'd really like you to join us. When we go abroad um, in the art department, go to New York and Berlin. We also do London, Oxford, Brighton, fantastic museums, which we really want you to, you to embed into your coursework. So progression routes for this A-level. It's a fantastic A-level, which will enhance your options for many, many industries. Okay, you'll gain innovative skills, you will be critically thinking. So whether you progress to university, foundation art, or an apprenticeship, or perhaps even start your own business, this will be a really good starting point for your career choices. Entry requirements. Five GCSEs at grade four or above, including English and maths. Then it would be preferable if you could have an art subject in your GCSEs. If not, produce a portfolio, bring it into you, we'll have a look at the work, it'll be fantastic. If you want to have a look at some more of our student work, have a look on HSDC Textiles on Instagram. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you. Enjoy it. Welcome to the Photography A-Level Virtual Open Evening. My name is Sally, Sally Stone, and I'm the Course Manager. 
Uh, A-Level Photography is a two-year course which teaches you all aspects of how to take photographs using uh, digital cameras and also using film cameras uh, as we work with both technologies whilst on course. So initially the first year is mostly workshop led where we teach you how to use your uh, digital camera with, with workshops in controlling aperture, shutter speed, ISO, manual and uh, manual modes. All the time the workshops uh, need to be recorded in a sketchbook format. Mostly the lessons are uh, we, we give you a lecture presentation and then you go out and uh, photograph locally around college or at home uh, if you've got that opportunity. Um, but then you record everything back into your sketchbooks. At the, at the moment, uh, students are using Google Slides as their sketchbooks. Um, this helps us with uh, looking at you know, how you're doing and um, we can also report back to you on um, you know, assessments and, and grades. So the first year in photography is a busy one with lots of new photographic experiments, both um, in and out of the studio and darkroom. We cover a variety of uh, topics or genres, um, including typologies, which is the first uh, assignment that we set, uh, and then followed by the abstract architecture assignment, uh, which we get students to shoot in black and white film. And then you, then you have an opportunity to process the film and print it in our own darkroom uh, at college. Uh, we then look at portraiture, which is always a, a good, um, fun uh, assignment to do. And we look at still life and documentary and advertising. And then when the weather is much better, uh, normally in springtime, summertime, uh, we look at landscape photography because it's always good to go out on field trips. So we go on a number of study trips. Uh, these are organised to coincide with national exhibitions. Um, last year we visited the National Portrait Gallery up in London uh, during our portrait workshop. Um, and students were able to see the work of great portraits at first hand, including the um, Taylor Wessing Portrait Photographic Prize. Um, but this year it's currently online, so uh, students can view it at any time of the year. So the first year ends with um, an internally set assignment where you can select your own interest or topic, genre in photography. Um, basically, you write, write your own brief, um, but you'll be also taught how to carry out contextual research into the work of others. Uh, this is an important part of the A-level, and this is where you get inspiration ideas for your project. The assessment um, in the first year is always ongoing, and as the course is 100% coursework. And as I said before, everything is uh, recorded into your sketchbook. The, the second year consists of two major components. Component one, uh, which starts at the end of year one and is worth 60% of your final grade. Uh, the project theme concept is entirely uh, of your own. Uh, this component is called the personal investigation. Researching into the work of others is a very important part of the component and also carrying out critical analysis for more in-depth uh, appreciation of the artist's work and then going and taking a number of photo shoots based on your proposal and project ideas. Component one uh, is set uh, between July and end, at the end of the first year and goes all the way through until the end of January the following year. Uh, the final outcome is normally a set of prints um, for exhibition purposes or a printed photo book which all of this can be printed at the College Reprographics Department. So component two is worth 40% of your final grade and is the externally set paper which the examining board set. Uh, there are 15 starter questions for you to select one and then you complete um, this as another project based on your choice of question. At the end of the second year, uh, about May time, we have a celebration evening. Uh, we, so we combine with the other art subjects at the college 
and we put on our own exhibition of um, photography. It's really nice to see all of your creative ideas and skills in amazing um, photography on display and it's a real celebration for you and your friends and family. Uh, so finally, um, just a little bit about buying a uh, camera, or camera equipment for the course. Um, it is preferable that you have your own digital camera, but please don't rush out and buy one straight away um, before you start the course. Uh, we can always discuss at the at the beginning, um, first few weeks, you know, once you're on course and that. Okay, but we do have some uh, cameras for loan. Uh, which our students can borrow it from the library and um, we have a few in the in the um, photography department. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this uh, short presentation and we look forward to seeing you very soon in the photography department. Happy photographing!